over here. I need you to hold this fingernail line and move it on. <laughs> Just once, I'd like to hear say, Charlene, can you please come over here? I sure could use your help. <gasps> you are not using that maxi glue stuff, are you? That's that stuff that could hold a construction worker suspended in midair. <laughs> yes, I am using maxi glue because I'm sick and tired of losing that fingernail and having to wait while you crawl around on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is dangerous. I know a guy who actually glued his fingers together. Yeah, well, I am not that stupid. See, nothing to it. All right, I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind Price, I met her at a patron of the arts meeting at the High Museum. She's a very interesting person, very high-spirited, full of fun, and she owns an art gallery, the Gallery of Set. Oh, I think I've been there. Isn't that that place in the mall right next to Hickory Farms? <laughs> Charlene, the gallery of you said is very highly respected for its contemporary art. I can assure you it is not located in a mall. You certainly do the whole no hall up lot about art. No, you had better not start talking art with Julia, Charlene. She'll start reminiscing about her art school days in Paris when she studied at the Sorbonne's. <laughs> sneak a peek at one of those. Of course, that's something I'd never do. It'd be an invasion of privacy. I'm just curious, you know, about the art world. You know, Charlene, I'm having a thought. Rosalind invited me to an opening at her gallery tonight. Why don't you come along? Really? Yeah, I think you might enjoy it. Oh, well, thank you, Julia. Well, Julia, aren't you going to ask me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because, Suzanne, that time Mother and I took you to the Louvre, <laughs> and you said, and I quote, I have no intention of being dragged to one more museum just to look at a bunch of pictures of small busted women with large butts lying around outdoors, naked, eating fruits. <laughs> Telephone. 
It's an exhibit. <laughs> I knew that! <laughs> I do not consider myself to be a completely stupid person, but I'm just confused. Now, what are y'all just going to have to tell me? When does a phone stop being a phone and become a piece of art? When it's in a gallery. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, what on earth did the artist have in mind when he made this? I mean, what is this? I mean, forget the landscape. Everything is nice. Would you stop? Y'all are embarrassing me. Now, I realize this might not be something everyone can appreciate, but if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them. I got a question for you. Did you know this cost $5,000? $5,000? <laughs> well, I suppose that is a little pricey, but the value is probably based on the statement the artist was making. Contemporary art is known for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the statement he's making here? Well, well, I'm not sure, but it's probably something that I'm just not getting. <laughs> Hello. You look, uh, hungry. Would you care for some cheese? Are you sure? It's absolutely delicious, and it's, uh, free. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I'm tired. I'm gonna sit down. Charlene! That's art. Well, what? You're kidding me. It just looks like a dumb old chair to me. Well, I'm sorry they don't have any pictures of clowns crying. <laughs> <laughs> those children with the big eyes. Oh, I love those! <laughs> I thought you would. What's that supposed to mean? It means she thinks we're cultural illiterates and probably ought to be buying our art at gas station parking lots. <laughs> Actually, I'm still wondering about the meaning of this painting. I mean, does anybody have any ideas? Yeah, I do. I see death and destruction. I see evil forces running rampant, possibly a nuclear bomb going off and bathing everything in darkness. I'd say all in all, it advocates peace. <laughs> How was that? Thank you, Charlene. You're welcome. Oh, I almost forgot. I went down to the bookstore today and got Susanna's book on sign language. You know, since her lips are glued together, I thought this might be I don't know. I think she's communicating pretty well with all those obscene gestures she's making. Yeah, well, maybe this will help her, you know, clean up her act a little bit. Hello. And you're Suzanne, aren't you? I know your sister. Interesting word. What does it say to you? Well, I understand. You're an anti-interpretationist. It's true. We are engulfed in a sea of over-interpretation. Art should just exist. <laughs> You're right. It's not my theory. It's Susan Sontag. You got me. Well, it was great talking to you. <laughs> I wonder how much it costs. Oh, no, I don't see a price tag. Oh, that's 
because it's not for sale. We were here first. Ah, oh, Mrs. Fredhold. Have you found something you like? Yes, this purse. How much is it? It's expensive. It's very, very expensive. In fact, it's the most expensive thing in here. Well, good. Well, I'm sure Julia wouldn't mind parting with it for, say, $5,000. $5,000? We'll take it. Sold! Marvelous. Now, if you'll just follow me into the office, I'll make you out for seat. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what's going on here? Nothing. I just sold your purse for $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> When you want to greet someone, you go like this. That means welcome. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why can't I just wave? Well, the reason is, a wave can have lots of different meanings. It's kind of like that Jewish word, shalom, which can also have lots of different meanings. It can mean hello, or goodbye, or peace, or that Hawaiian word, aloha. Hey. Yes, well, as Julia Sugarbaker's personal manager, I feel compelled to inform you that she has retired. Should anyone want to review more of her purse art, I suggest contacting the accessory department at your local J.C. Penney's. <laughs> Another art magazine. The third one this morning. Apparently, I am the hot new commodity in the art world. Those people who bought my purse not only have big wallets, they have big mouths. <laughs> oh, come on now, Julia. Aren't you the least bit proud that people are excited about your work? I mean, come on, Van Gogh only sold one paint his entire life. Julia, you are tied with Van Gogh! <laughs> <laughs> Rosalind, we have to talk. Oh, come on, Julia. You left so quickly yesterday, I didn't have a chance to give you your money. Minus my commission, of course. You know I'm not going to take that. I only went along with your little prank so it wouldn't cause a scene at your opening. Oh, come on, Julia. Like now. I love art as much as you do, but people like the Fred Holmes need to be tweaked every once in a while. Anyway, they're happy, and they're telling people because I've been getting phone calls like crazy. Everyone wants to see your art. Isn't that a hoot? Gee, I'm sorry. I'm fresh out of purses. <laughs> Maybe your clients would be interested in some belts or some shoes or perhaps some old under things. <laughs> hey, Judy, what about all those old paintings you got stored up in your attic? Paintings? Oh, yeah, she's got lots of them up there. She never lets us see them, though. Charlene, I do not think those would be quite Rosalind's kind of art. Oh, come on, Julia, try me. You know, lots of people would kill for an opportunity like this. Tell you what, Thursday nights I always show new artists, and if you just want to drop your paintings by no pressure, we'll just throw them up on the walls and see what happens. Okay? Bye-bye, Julia. Bye. Julia, this is so exciting you've been discovered. Oh, sure. oh. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Guess what, Charlene? I've got great news. Oh, so does Julia. She's going to be famous. Oh, great. <laughs> Look, I've been down to McCurdy's uh, you pull it yourself salvage yard, and I found a bumper for your car. Isn't it fantastic? I didn't find a fender yet, but they're working on it. What? It's practically brand new. Oh, Mary Jo, I told you we could just let this whole thing go, but... You're the one who's insisted on making it right. But you know, I think you should have asked me first if I wanted used old junk parts on my car. Well, all right, Charlie. I mean, I have done everything I can to come up with a creative solution. Well, for Pete's sakes, when Suzanne scratched my car, we didn't have this much trouble, did we, Suzanne? Tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Charlene, I want your honest opinion. Do you think my paintings are 
unappealing. Oh no, Julia, I, my mouth gets watery just looking at your fruit bowls. I mean, you certainly have a way of capturing papaya. Don't worry, Julia, I'm sure people are going to take an interest in your work real soon. My, what a beautiful painting. Whatever that is doing hanging in this tiny little gallery, I shall never know. <laughs> I mean, first off, it's so much better than that guy Picasso. I mean, I haven't been criticized, but don't you think his people look like accident victims? <laughs> with an eye over here and a nose over here. <coughs> hey, Charlie. Hey, Joe. What's going on? Well, I'm just trying to generate some interest in Julie's paintings. Between you and me, I don't think folks are much interested in her work. Well, you don't see too many fruit bowls around these days. <laughs> Personally, I like them. Where's Suzanne? Oh, she finally went to get her lips done. Some big time plastic surgeon out on Pace's Ferry. Suzanne says he does all the best lips in Atlanta. Gosh, Julia looks so disappointed. Oh, Mary Jo, go see if you can cheer her up. I'm gonna try to drum up some more business. Well, hi, Julia. Oh, I like your paintings. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Jo, please. No, no, I really do. I mean, I don't know as much about this stuff as you do, but I, gee, I'm really impressed. Well, personally, <laughs> I'm glad my work is failing to generate much interest. After the silliness we've been through, the fact that these completely meritless paintings aren't selling sort of restores my faith in the art world. Anyway, how are you doing? Oh, okay. Still trying to convince Charlene to let me fix her car. I tell you, I wish I could just hand her a check for $2,044 and be done with it. Julia, your fruit bowls. Mm -hmm. What about them? They're so campy. <laughs> well, I realize they're not person. Oh, no, 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 no. I like campy. Campy sells. They look like something you'd find on the walls of a cheap motel room. <laughs> Now I have to practice kissing myself in the mirror all the time just to 
get my lips back in shape. <laughs> well, we can only imagine what a traumatic experience that is for you. All right, Charlene, I think it's time we return these paintings to the attic. Well, at least I finally got to take a look at them. Are you sure you want to put them away now that you're a professional, Julia? I mean, you know, you do have a responsibility to your fans. Mary Jo, I'm scared of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they were outside right now picking through my garbage. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for me to gracefully retire. You know, I used to think I knew a little something about art, but this experience has left me completely nonplussed. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Except for that word nonplus. <laughs> well, I have plenty to say about the things that have been going on around here for the past couple of days. First of all, Julia, you made a complete fool of yourself at that art gallery. And that friend Rose in the yards, she dresses like a shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary Jo, I cannot believe that you went and gave Charlene all that money just because she didn't want some used parts on her car. I mean, please. She comes from hillbilly territory. <laughs> they drive like 400 junky cars up on blocks in their front yard. Uh, Charlene, hand me that maxi glue. Oh, no, that stuff is dangerous. I am throwing that stuff away. But you know, Suzanne, I can't wait till I talk to my family and my hick friends back home in Poplar Bluff about this former beauty queen who tried to do her nail on and instead glued her lips together. They are never going to 